See, when you are not filling your life with the things that you are capable of doing, see, we all have some stuff that we've been given. And I don't think that it's optional for us to sit on what we have. See, if you're sitting on what you have, what you've been given, and I think everybody's been given something to bring to the planet, that only you can do that, only you can perform that, only you can initiate that activity. And if you don't do that, if you're not filling in your life with your life work or your mission, then there are gaps in your life. And what we do when we're not living out our true identity, we begin to fill the gaps, we fill the holes with garbage. Alcohol, drugs, worry, self-destructive behavior. So when you begin to look at your life and you know that, that you're not doing what you can do because you have allowed yourself to be held captive by your fears. Now, when you don't have a true appreciation and acceptance for who you are, and you allow yourself to be immobilized by fear, what happens in the process is that you begin to abuse yourself. You begin to sabotage your life, you begin to sabotage your dreams, you begin to unconsciously work against yourself. You become your own worst enemy. So what do you do about that? Well, you, you begin to realize that your dream and your gifts have so much meaning and so much value for you till your hunger for them will begin to push you past the fear. Your hunger to have them will give you a special drive as you work on yourself, as you begin to acknowledge your true identity, the true power that you have, the true capacity you have to bring about change, the miracle working power that you have within yourself to do the things that you want to do. When you take them on, I'm reminded of a man who, this gentleman was doing a special study of a special tribe in Africa, headhunters and he had difficulty in developing a relationship with these tribesmen because of the fact that he had fear. He had fear they would take his head. I tell you, all fears aren't bad. That was a legitimate fear. That was a good fear to give you a headache. <laughs> so he worked there for a long time with no effort, no progress in developing a relationship and rapport and being able to achieve a level of trust. So finally one night while he was in bed, he was thinking about it, I said, what, what is it that you came here to do? What is your life work as a missionary? He said, I want to study these tribesmen. He said, what's the worst thing that they can do to you? Kill you. And he just decided, hey, this is what I came here to do. I know that there's some risk involved and I'm going to do it, come what may. He said, I'm not going to be afraid of you. He went back the next day and he started doing the work and trying to talk to and interview many of the members of this tribe. And they began to respond to him. They threw out the welcome mat to him. And years later, when people came to see what his progress was, they asked him, how were you able to do this? How did you convert the relationship from being hostile to that of being positive? And he said something I think has value for all of us. He said, when life can no longer threaten you with death, he said, what else is there? What else is there? And the majority of the fears that we have are not life or death fears. They're not those kind of fears. But through our imagination, we blow them out of proportion and we give them more power than they actually have or deserve and we permit them to govern our lives. We permit them to determine how far we can stretch out on our dreams and discovering our stuff. And as we begin to look at ourselves and, and begin to wait a minute, just getting to the point as you assess yourself and, and begin to prove yourself and just say, wait, hold a minute, hold a minute. I've been sweating this out. What can, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this? Will it kill me? Will I die? Why, why am I going through all of these changes over this? How much power does this really have? 
And am I the one that's feeding the power into it? See, a lot of times we, we allow ourselves to be fed and to be programmed into to being afraid. I mean, you watch the news and read the newspaper, you'll be scared to come out the house. Am I right? You'd be afraid. So what kinds of things, what kinds of thoughts are you feeding your consciousness? What kind of things are you putting in your mind that will enable you to either move forward or to justify why you are staying where you are? Another piece that I look at that when I finally decided that I was going to go to the dentist, the pain was so great, I couldn't hold out any longer. All of a sudden, the fear didn't matter. <laughs> I can't but take me. <laughs> Now, some people need fear, you know. Have a friend that, that we told him, hey, man, you, you know, you need to lose some weight. You, you, you're getting overweight and out of shape. And at our age, we need to have a regular program. And Bud said, man, I, I've been fat since I was a little boy. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm big bone. I've never seen a fat skeleton, though. You know? <laughs> well, Bud became ill. <laughs> How many of you ever seen a fat skeleton right here? I know, all right. Bud became ill, passed out, and um, I was there, and the doctor was talking to him. And Bud, I think, was going to go right back to same old eating habits and doing everything. You know, he said, look here, um, you are a diabetic. He said, now, here's some of the side effects. You know, you could go blind, you can become an amputee. None of that touched him. He said, you can become impotent. He said, what did you say? <laughs> has lost weight, he exercises every day, he's in the body sculpturing. <laughs> 48 years young, he looks great. I can't believe, but just that one statement <laughs> made all the difference in the world. Bud is a new man today. So what is it that has to happen to you? Some people don't take corrective measures to improve their health until they get a pronouncement that they're about to die. Then they start, okay, all right, I'm ready to do whatever you want me to do. But they won't do that. They can see people drop it off like flies around them. Well, that's them, you gotta go from something. <laughs> we go through life really blocking ourselves constantly. And fear is one of the, the greatest instruments that we could use to stifle our true potential. When you begin to, to look at your life, you can decide to, to use fear as a blocker or you can decide to use it as building blocks. That you decide, hey, look here, I'm going to move in this direction. I'm not going to allow anything to stop me from doing what I want to do. Shake somebody's hand on your right and left and say, I'm unstoppable. <laughs> See, when you begin to understand and acknowledge your fear and you go forth anyhow, you go forth in a spirit and a knowing that there's a way that you can begin to handle this. There's a way out here somewhere. There's a solution for what it is that you're seeking, that you have the capacity to whatever comes up to handle it, to face it. And rather than feeling powerless, you begin to feel powerful. See, when all of the major downsizings that are taking place around this country, there are a lot of people who are biting their fingers in fear that they might lose their jobs. But there are few people who have decided within themselves, I'm going to make it. Some people aren't waiting to be cut. Some people are moving on their own because they feel within themselves, I've got what it takes to make it. They're not afraid about tomorrow because of how they see themselves, because of what they feel that they deserve, because of what they feel that they can create for themselves. Because these people have decided as they look at the future, as they look at themselves, there's a way where there's a will, there's a way for me to begin to create a way out of no way. And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, nothing can stop you. Nothing. What would your life be like as you look toward the future if you decided, I'm not going to allow my fears to stop me?
What would your life be like? What would your future be like if you decided to, to want that which you desire so strongly that it prepares you past your fears, that you experience the fear, as the one book says, feel the fear and do it anyway. What would your life be like? And I'm saying to you that all of us who have been entombed by fear have the capacity to resurrect ourselves and to resurrect our dreams. All of us have the capacity to do that. And you have, is it easy? No, it's not easy. Can I do it? Yes. What's one of the ways to get started? Some of us need somebody to hold our hands. Sometimes we need somebody to help us out. Be willing to say, I don't know. Be willing to reach out. Be willing to get some assistance to take you to the next level. What great athlete. You never expect boxers to make profound statements. I think it was Joe Frazier who said this one. He says, all of us are like the blind man at some point in our lives standing on the corner waiting for somebody to lead us across. So all of us at some point in our lives need some help, need someone to reach out to us, to throw out the lifeline, to help us go across some treacherous waters that we couldn't navigate by ourselves. None of us do it by ourselves. All of us at some point of our lives. We need that kind of help. We need that kind of assistance because we grow from the people we have in our lives that can enrich our lives personally, professionally, spiritually, and all the dimensions of our lives. We don't grow in a vacuum. So as you look at yourself, what are the fears you have that maybe you need some help in strengthening yourself in that area as you assess your strengths and your weaknesses, as you begin to approve yourself and your passions and your dreams and your goals and the things that you want, if you decide to experience all of your true potential, as you decide to manifest all of your greatness, as you decide, wait a minute, what, what else is available to me out here if I decided to experience the fear of rejection the fear of no, the fear of failure, the fear of, of standing by myself. What else is available of taking a chance, a fear of losing it all? What else is available to me that will bring some extra meaning and value? The fear of people not liking me. You know how many people do things they don't want to do because they want everybody to like them? Everybody's not going to like you. Excuse me, special announcement. Everybody's not going to like you. No, that's, it's, it's just not that kind of world. What, but you know, there are a lot of people who won't take positions on issues, who won't take a stand for things they believe in, who won't speak up for themselves because they don't want to make anybody mad. Oh, it was Bill Cosby. He said, I don't know what the secret of success is. He said, but here's what I know what the secret of failure is. He said, trying to please everybody. You can't please everybody. But there are people who have the fear of rocking the boat. So they just go alone in life, just go alone. Well, how do you feel? Well, I don't really want to say. <laughs> how many of you know people like that? Raise your hand. These people aren't living life. They're not truly experiencing life. What do you really want to do? Well, I don't like this, but I guess I'll go ahead on and do it. No! The life is too short for that. Too short and unpredictable, mosing through. Not trying to disturb anything, not trying to shake anything up, not trying to make any waves. You see, there are some people who, ha who come through the universe and their level of contribution and the level of energy they manifest is so small, so inconspicuous, that when they go, you won't even know they left. I mean, there are people who die on jobs, and, and you say, hey, where's John? Oh, John's been dead six months. <laughs> You're kidding. No. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't know. Why did somebody say, well, I, I guess we didn't miss him. <laughs> but there's some people, because of their personality, because of their contribution, because of their, the investment of their time and their energy and the impact they have there, that when they go, everybody will miss them. So when Mother Teresa checks out, everybody will know. When Rosa Parks, everybody
everybody will know. Nelson Mandela, everybody will know. Why? Because of their contribution. See, but there's some people because their contribution is so small, no one will care. So I'm saying, before you are boxed and buried, decide that you're going to box and bury your fears. Decide that you're going to begin to live life on a new level, seeking out new horizons, that you're going to find more love and more joy and more ways to give more to life. God said something, I love this. He says, everything a man does for himself, guess what? He takes with him, but everything he does for others, he leaves behind. So when you begin to say, what is it that I want to leave? What contribution that I want to begin to make? What difference do I want to make in life? What is it that I want to do with the rest of the life that I have left? What, what chances I need to take? What risks do I need to begin to embrace? What fears do I need to step on? What areas of my life am I dead right now? What dream? You can either live your dreams or live your fears. You have got to get to a point where you say, I'm sick and tired of living like this. There's got to be more. That's, see, that's when people go out and, and strike out on their dreams. That's when people get out of relationships where they're dying together rather than growing together. That's where they leave jobs. So where are you going? Away from here. I don't know. <laughs> Do you have another job? No, I don't. What, 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 how are you going to make it? I don't know, but I will. See, you will, when you put yourself in that kind of situation, I'm reminded of, of two frogs that, that were hopping down the road and they, they fell into a bottle of milk. And one was hopping up and down for a while and he drowned, he just gave up. But this other frog just kept on kicking. He wouldn't give up, he just kept on kicking. And pretty soon he churned that milk into butter and he walked on out. <laughs> I'm saying when life catches you by the neck and the blind slap you, whap and knock you down, I said just keep on kicking, you know, and you can kick on out of those circumstances, whatever they are, not be intimidated by them.